In a previous video, I talked about how getting to know the name of the organisms around you is essential to building a relationship with them, to having an emotional connection. We are going to deepen a relationship with specific individuals. Yes, specific individuals. Now, who would that be? Well, it's super easy when we do it with plants. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to get to know them better. And this is going to be really valuable for science. Last week, we talked about phenology, which has to do with the timing of things in nature, specifically plant phenology. This week, we are going to deepen this knowledge by focusing on at least one individual plant, the same plant over and over again, and we are going to track it through the year. And what we're gonna be doing is tracking the phenophases or the specific life changes that happen within a plant's life. Things like leaves coming out, flowers, fruits ripening, leaves falling off in the fall again. And we're gonna do it with an app called Project Bud Boost. Last week, I showed you how to add phenological data to iNaturalist. And iNaturalist really doesn't want you to do repeat observations of the same plants. They would rather have you get more of an abundance or diversity of species. But with Project Butverse, they want you to track a specific individual plant throughout time. This is important for two different reasons. For one, there's just not enough scientists out there to be able to take this information. So by you contributing, you are acting as a scientist and you are contributing to research. This really helps them. I worked on a big citizen science or community science project and we needed volunteers to help us collect data. The other really cool thing is that scientists then get information about plants in private yards. This is actually pretty hard to do. Can you imagine if you were a scientist and you had to go to all these different yards to get permission from people? It's much easier to get permits that would cover a couple of state or national parks, but with private landscapes, you would need to contact every single individual landowner. That would take a lot of time. By you participating, this helps research immensely. Protected areas only make up a small percentage of land. Most species occur in private areas. What do plants have to do with wildlife? Well, we talked about how by moth definitions, plants are actually considered wildlife. By participating in Project Bud Burst, you are monitoring wildlife species. But also, plants are incredibly important to animals because they provide habitat and forage for either themselves or for the species that they consume. Your phenological data can help scientists understand animals better. And this is so important with climate change because temperatures are changing, but daylight is not changing. There might be mismatches going on between different species. For instance, with plants, you might have them leafing out sooner. And then certain animals that depend on them, like caterpillars, they might come out sooner too to consume the leaves. But if birds are paying attention to daylight cues to know when to migrate, they might be off. The food sources that they depend on, like the caterpillars, they might already be out, but the birds might be leaks behind. I used to study forest elephants in Gabon, and where I worked, they had long-term phenological data on the same plant species for over 20 years. What they were able to do is look at the phenological data in the food available for forest elephants, because forest elephants eat a lot of plants, especially fruits and they tied it to the body condition of the forest elephants. What they were learning was there is actually less available fruit in the forest for these species. So it all ties together. Your data is so important now because the climate is changing. We need to understand how plants are changing and the relationships that they have with other species are affected. I'm gonna choose a couple of trees in my backyard and I'm gonna take data throughout the year. And by the end of the year, I'm gonna post a cool video of everything I've observed. I started phenological data on this tree. It is my favorite tree in the yard. So let's update it. I have not been consistent, but let's be consistent this year. This is my favorite tree. It is a huge Open the app. And then we're going to find our tree. It's gonna be this one, the white oak. This is our tree here. And let's add an observation. I'm gonna start taking some pictures. These are what the buds look like. 
You're going to snap some pictures. I upload them. Then you're going to say what kind of picture it is. We're doing a phenological one. What is the phenophase that we have here? Flowers. We don't have anything at this point, so we're going to say none. Now it's asking for the fruit phenophase, and there is, of course, no evidence of fruit, so we're going to say none. I just took three different pictures of what is going on. And again, we're gonna do none, it's too early. And we're gonna submit our observation. That's it for this oak tree. And I'm gonna pay close attention to when the leaves start to come out, when the flowers come out and submit my information when I notice new things happening. Say you don't know what kind of tree you're working with, I'm gonna do an observation for this comfort tree. You can do it for different types of trees as well. You can also do it for flowers. So I'm gonna take you through the process. Okay, so I'm going to take a photo. Let's get a good picture of the needle. I'm gonna take a picture. And then they're gonna give me a suggestion. They're gonna connect me to iNaturalist. Now say I don't know what species this is. What I'm gonna first do is put it on iNaturalist and try to get the species and then I'm gonna come back to doing this. I have the Seek app open and Seek was, it's not an ant. Seek was able to identify it right away as an Eastern white pine. I'm gonna trust that observation. I'm gonna go back to Budburst. I'm gonna hit Eastern white pine, add observation. Let's do phenology. Let's do Eastern white pine. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna put that in there. Okay, let's hit next. We made our observation today. So pollen pitcher. I'm not seeing any evidence of pollen here, so I'm gonna hit none. No pollen is falling. Don't see any fruits either. Take another picture. Don't see any cones developing at all. So I'm gonna say none. Definitely see needles on here. I'm gonna say middle. I'm gonna submit my observation. Here are now the trees in my backyard. I'm also gonna update the sugar maple now. If you're unsure of any of the definitions, just go to Project Bud Burst online. They have tons of resources to help you. While I'm out here, I notice other plants blooming. Me and Gus noticed that. Gus is not letting me. <laughs> I'm going to add them to iNaturalist for important phenological information. This video is part of my Wildlife Biology for Kids Club program. You will get the accompanying downloadable activities, take them into your backyard, into your neighborhood, and use them to explore nature together. You get access to a community of like-minded individuals to share your findings and get inspired by what others discover. Interact with me and there will be exclusive content. Check out the description below for the enrollment link. You can enroll at any time. These activities are meant to be fun, easy, and intentional to get you and your child outside discovering nature, fostering their curiosity, and connecting together. Make sure you subscribe so that you get the notification when the next video is out.